Hi everybody, this is Anastasia from IntuLab, and as you may know we're getting ready for a pretty big release pretty soon, the IntuFace version 5.4, and in this video I'd like to give you a little sneak peek for what's in store for you. So the new release has several pretty exciting features, but right now I'd like to talk to you about how IntuFace embraces design for accessibility. We work together with Paolo Tussolini and Microsoft Production Studios to figure out how we can help you design interactive experiences for individuals with disabilities, meaning individuals that are either visually impaired, have difficulties hearing, or have mobility limitations. The new release will include three features to help you make inclusive experiences that are designed for everybody. The first is the text-to-speech feature. This feature enables you to synthesize the text from your experience into speech. It will only be available on Windows for the moment, and it works with all the languages that are installed on your Windows machine. The next one is the keyboard events. Now this was a popular request, we got it from many of you. And it's finally here. You can create triggers based on different keys pressed on your keyboard, or devices similar to a keyboard, like a clicker. And the last one is the gestures on asset. This enables you to create areas in your experience where the user will be able to do gestures on specifically designed areas of your experience. Gestures such as swipe left, right, or all the other gestures that IntuiFace supports. And now I'm going to pass the mic to my colleague Sebastian that will work you through these features in more details and show you how to use them. Okay, let's see how it works. So the three new features, text-to-speech, keyboard triggers, and gestures on static assets. We will also publish a new sample which will be a revisited version of the Da Vinci, the museum sample. Uh, I don't have the current, the final name of the experience but it will basically reuse the Da Vinci sample and adapt it to blind people using the text-to-speech and the keyboard triggers. So this will be the design accelerator for the text-to-speech here you will be able to say hello to type the text. You want to read aloud and then to select the voice. If here if you have some speakers you will hear Anna saying hello world. And on my machine I have several English languages, several English voices installed so you can select the one you want to use in your experience. Let's see how it works and let's use the keyboard triggers and the gestures to control this carousel. As I mentioned, these three features have been developed based on the collaboration with Microsoft Production Studios and Paolo, one of our interface experts. So let's go back to edit mode into the accessibility. Right. So this is a beta version of the interface 5.4 composer that is going to be released middle of April. So first thing, the text-to-speech. What I'm going to say is that when I'm going to rotate this carousel, it's going to say artwork, biography, top museums. To do that, I will add some triggers on the carousel itself. This one is not based on an Excel file, but it could, and it would be actually simpler if you have some kind of database to automate synthesizing the text. So here on the carousel, I will do it for the first one. When the carousel reaches the index number one, that's this one, okay, then I will call an action on my text-to-speech interface asset. It has a start synthesis method with the text. Here I will say artwork. So when the carousel is going to spin and to reach the index number one, it will read aloud artwork. And you will do the same for the other ones. So just repeat the same mechanism and say for this one it will be biography, right? Here is the interface set, text to speech. You will find it under here is my panel. The accessibility category, text to speech, that's it. And it has three main properties. The voice name, with some help about that the volume and the speed. So you can adjust these three properties for the text-to-speech. So that's one feature and honestly the, the Da Vinci simple will illustrate it quite a lot. It will also embed a configuration scene when you can select the voice among the ones which are installed on your machine and you'll have 
a big article about that on the knowledge base explaining how to install new voices etc. It works here on my Windows 7 machine. It, will, it works also of course on Windows 8, 8.1 and Windows 10. So next one, the keyboard triggers. First thing here in the project settings you will see a new property navigate using a row keys if it's, if it's checked like it is right now by default using the left and right keys or up and down keys will move you to the next scene or previous scene don't have to add any triggers on all the scenes it's global navigation using the arrow keys of your keyboard and typically when you have a PowerPoint clicker simulates this kind of arrow keys so it will work the same way. Now you can override these triggers and this is what I'm going to, to do here. So the keyboard triggers belongs to the scene itself, right? It's global. So here on my scene I can add a new trigger and you have a new trigger category, key presses. You have some specific keys like this one so here I'm going to use not the left and right because I want to keep them for my navigation but let's say the up and down so let's start with the down when the down key is pressed then I want my carousel to navigate to the next item right and then I can duplicate this one nope I want to duplicate here the trigger itself and say when upper row is pressed then I want to do a previous right now you can also ha have more complex key combinations here if you select that field and use your keyboard for example I would say control alt s it takes the input your keyboard input as the parameter itself so you can create some expert combinations for example for the administrator to enter a hidden scene on the kiosk to configure something or to, you can use the control enter to do something in addition to what's going to happen when you press the enter key, the return key, right? So you have all these keys and the arrows want left, right, up and down will override the default navigation triggers if you enable them in the project settings. So that's for the keyboard triggers. And the last one is gestures on static assets. So you remember that on the scene you have the gesture here, gesture detected. And you had a list of all the gestures you could use. Now you have nice icons so it's easy to understand what these gestures are. You don't have to go into the documentation to see them. right? And this one is on the scene. Now if I select my rectangle here, I will find in the touch category the same gesture detected. So I can say here when I get a swipe left, that's this one, on this rectangle then on the carousel I will do a next. So you can have multiple areas on your scene handling the same gesture, swipe left, and it will do different actions. So you get a, a better behavior, a, a more precise behavior as what you had earlier with the scene gesture recognition only. So that's it for the accessibility enablement. Of course there are lots and lots of scenarios to imagine with these three features and we count on you to post them on the community to share all your ideas about what you are going to do with the text speech, the keyboard triggers and the gestures and static assets.